I teach a course at Warsaw University on 100 years of US relations with Central and Eastern Europe from Wilson basically to the, to the present day. And what I discovered in researching for that course is that the way the United States regards Central Europe tells us a lot about its foreign policy in general, a lot. Wilson saw Europe as part of an, un, as Central Europe as part of an undivided Europe. Roosevelt gave up on Central and Eastern Europe at Yalta. Kennedy and Johnson basically, ex, and Nixon especially, accepted the division of Europe. Reagan did not. And then George H.W. Bush, Bill Clinton, George W. Bush, and Obama all defended the achievement of a united Europe, the self-liberation of Central and Eastern Europe in the name of an undivided Europe. It wasn't about Central and Eastern Europe by itself. It was that Central and Eastern Europe is key to whether Europe will be divided or united. That's a very big deal. Today, Central and Eastern Europe matters for two reasons. One, if you think democracy is on the defensive, then China and Russia in very different ways are going to try to intimidate Central and Eastern Europe or influence it or use corruption or let us say highly leveraged projects like the Belt and Road Initiative to try to gain influence there. So this stuff matters and it matters because a united Europe is in America's interest. And defending ourselves against Kremlin aggression is in America's interest. So Central Europe and the United States have a lot of parallel interests. Of course, there is also the difficult question of democracy in general being pressed by authoritarians and their ideology. And this is true in Central and Eastern Europe. It's also true in the United States. I mean, what is Trump? Well, Trumpism, except an American version of right-wing nationalism. Because it has become something of a cliche in Washington that democracy is imperiled in Central and Eastern Europe. And there's a basis for this. I mean, we can, you, it's a long conversation about Viktor Orban and illiberal democracy and what he's done and some of the less wise moves from the government in Poland. There is a counter trend. I mean, Zuzana Chaputova was elected in reaction against corruption. She's a civil society activist. She speaks as if 1989 were yesterday. Um, she is in that tradition of Václav Havel and Charter 77, and basically the democratic dissidents who led the way to overthrowing communism. And she won. And there are the, the new government in Estonia is similarly of liberal mind. So I think it is a cliche to simply dismiss Central and Eastern Europe. I think that it's important for the United States to stand for democracy, but not for left or right in the region. That's not our business. The stronger Central and Eastern Europe is, the greater the chances that Ukraine and Belarus and Georgia and Armenia and other countries will find their way to Europe just as Central, and Eastern, Central Europe did a generation ago.